Soldering iron, soldering iron, soldering irons. If you do any type of electronic repair, you can't be without a soldering iron. Um, if you do a lot of electronic repair, you probably want to have a some type of desoldering iron. But one thing all of this has in common is the soldering iron or desoldering iron tip. And it's probably one of the most uh, overlooked <laughs> piece of... Uh, you know, equi equipment that you have, and if you think about it, it's probably one of the most important pieces of equipment that you have. Um, doesn't matter how good a soldering iron base station you have, you know, power unit, how good the hand pieces are, if uh, you don't take care of your soldering iron tips and your desoldering iron tips, you're going to get uh, poor performance and poor results from your equipment. So, let me move just a little bit of this out of the way, because we don't need all of these stands. So, you know, right here are two that I use probably the most. Um, they're always in use. You know, I'm sucking out with this one and putting back in with this one all the time. Um, now, there's lots of different ways to, you know, maintain your tip. There's, um, shoot, they make little, they're expensive cans of tip cleaner and all kinds of stuff. But honestly, all you really need is a brass wool sponge and a real sponge. Um, and most of your soldering iron stations come with the sponge type the uh, for cleaning the tips. Now, I like to have both because occasionally you'll get so much flux residue and build up on your tip that the sponge will no longer remove it. The uh, Now, paste, which is what all of this equipment is, um, I think they call that a shocking sponge. <laughs> but uh, it's nothing more than a sponge. Now, probably the first thing with your sponge, um, it's going to cost you maybe a dollar, but I highly recommend it. Don't use tap water. Um, now, if you're only soldering once in a while, yeah, you probably get away with it. You'll never have to worry about it. But if you do as many thousands and thousands of soldering joints as I do, um, it's really quickly you're going to find that your sponges um, are getting contaminated. And you'll often see used pace equipment, and these stands are just anywhere around, you know, where the, especially you know, where the sponge is, the, the finish on the stands is just eaten away and there's nothing there. Well, the reason they're like that is because people use tap water. And tap water has hard water particles in it, and as the water dries, it shrinks and it, you know, it slowly starts to eat away at the the paint finish and the paint the paint comes off. Um, well, that's contamination, and basically all you're going to be doing then is wiping that contamination onto your soldering iron tip. So, like I say, doesn't cost much, about a dollar. Go to the grocery store and you can get in a whole gallon of water. But what you want is steam distilled water. Now we don't need ultra super pure water that, you know, that's, you know, meets, I don't know, NASA specifications or something. We just want clean water that doesn't have hard water particles. And all you really need is steam distilled because steam distilled is just what it says. The, the water is boiled the steam then condenses and, you know, is collected in a chamber. But, of course, hard water particles don't evaporate. They're minerals. So, steam distilled is fine. Now, I put it in these little, you know, squeeze bottles, and that's what I use to, you know, occasionally dampen this. Now, you don't want to get your sponges to the point where they're soggy. I like to just, you know, when you put your finger on there, I can just feel it's damp, you know, kind of. Um, you know, you don't want to, when you touch your soldering iron to it, you don't want to hear, you don't want water boiling off. Because that is hard on the tips. And, you know, you're shock, and that's, you know, paste does call it a shocking sponge, but yeah, you're definitely shocking your tip if you use soggy, wet sponges. So just enough to where, like I say, I can touch the sponge, pull my finger up, and it's not wet. You know, even if I push on it, yeah, there's just barely any signs of moisture there. So that's all the, all the, uh, the damper that it needs to be. Now, like I say, when your tip, now I'm, I just, if you heard a beep, I was just actually turning the power unit on for this. Um, but w one reason it's really important to take care of your tips is, for starters, if you're using good equipment like this, they're not cheap. Um, 
actually they don't cost that much but you know if if you don't take care of them properly it, it's going to get expensive because you're going to be replacing them all the time now this tip is probably oh i don't know seven hell eight nine months old i don't know it's got some age to it and this is the tip this is probably uh my most used tip um heck are they? I actually have, you can see I have <laughs> quite a few spares. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's this one. That is the Pace. Oh, what model number is that? Ooh, three. Is that 60 or 80? Yeah, ooh, three sixties. But uh, they are without a doubt my favorite tip, and that, and that can vary from person to person. Um, I like the chisel tips like this for pretty much anything through hole this this tip size here is just about perfect um i don't need a you know monster of a tip you know, i don't need big huge chisel tips like this when i'm doing through hole components um this one works even for uh doing you know tube type point to point wiring but when you get into doing uh you know larger stuff big terminal tie strips with lots of leads going to it. Yeah, that's when you want to step up to a, a larger tip. But you know, this video is on maintenance. Now, this is a brand new tip, and I don't know how well that shows up in the camera, but you can see right to there, okay, there's a difference in the how shiny that is. It looks like a different color on the end. Okay, the paste tips, basically the solder doesn't stick back here, and it does stick up here because um, you don't want your entire tip. Now, Cheaper soldering irons, the solder will stick to the whole thing, but that's not a problem. After you use it for a while, if you only tin the tip, and tinning is cleaning the tip and then applying solder to it, if you only tin just the tip of it, it doesn't take long before you get a layer of gunk and buildup on the back side of the tip, and solder will no longer stick to it. And that's great, because actually that's what you want. You don't want solder to stick to the entire thing. You only want it out here at the tip. So... Like I say, this one's been in use for a long time. God knows how many thousands of solder connections I've made with it. Um, but maintenance. The first thing to always remember is, anytime you're done with your soldering iron, make sure there's solder on the tip. The solder actually forms a protective coating on that tip to prevent it from oxidizing and nasty things happening to it when you're not using it. So, you know, you get done doing some soldering, and it's going to be 15 to 20 minutes before you get back to, you know, soldering something. What I like to do is just give it a quick wipe, come in with a little bit of fresh solder, and make sure it's completely coated with solder. Now, the only thing that's oxidizing is going to be that solder that's on the outside. The actual tip itself is now protected. Now, after you use your tip for a long time, and like I say, that's why I like to have both of these. The shocking sponge is great for cleaning just the regular solder dross off, you know, the flux residue and the solder and whatnot. And you'll see after, you know, I wipe it off there really good. You can see it's, see how nice and clean that is? There's nothing, no imperfections in it at all. It's in just as good a condition as the day it was brand new, came out of this bag, and was installed in this iron. And that's because I take good care of it. Now, you can see the eventually the flux will start to build up back here really thick. And you don't want too much gunk and crap build up there. And, and eventually you actually start to get this, the flux will start to come out here onto that part that's tinned. And you'll see your solder is not sticking everywhere it should be. That's where I like the brass wool sponges. I can stick it in there because this stuff is very abrasive, you know, to the tip. So I can get in there, really give it a good scrub down. You can see how that's removed a lot of that extra flux that was really caked on there. And then I can come back in. And after I've done a good scrub down like that, I need I like to give it a really good, you know, tinning. And I'll do it maybe once or twice actually to make sure it's really really cleaned up. Because remember the flux that's in this solder is actually cleaning as well. That's what flux does. Flux cleans you end up with good solder connections. Now, like I say, and there it's ready for use, or because it's it's got solder on there now, it's safe to stick in the soldering iron stand there and come back, you know, however God knows how long you're going to be till you actually use the thing. But uh, maintenance, like I say, it's so important on tips. 
and it's the same for desoldering. These tips are no different. You can look at the, you know, the desoldering tips. You can probably see that through the bag. You can see that how there's it's tinned out there on the end, and it's not back here. Same thing. They plate these so the solder does not stick back here, only to the to the end of the tip there. Because we're not soldering or desoldering with the part back here. All that basically is doing is a thermal reserve. That's holding some heat energy that's you know ready for immediate use out there at the tip. But uh, now these things will take a lot a lot more of a beating. Um, and the older style desoldering irons used to use what I call basically a piece of bored out copper or a copper tube that was tinned. Um, matter of fact, let me pull a drawer full of them out. I don't use them anymore, but I have them. Yeah, here's a drawer full of them. So they're just, as you can see, just little tubes. And they're hollow. But these things, boy, back when I was in Asia, you can see these are paste as well. But uh, I used to go through a lot of these. <laughs> now, you have to remember, I do a lot of desoldering because I do a lot of capacitor replacements and radios, you know, full full electrolytic capacitor replacements. But the problem I've, I used to have back in the day when I used these was I didn't wear the outside out. I was actually wearing the inside of these out. Because what would happen is, you know, when you're desoldering, there's flux on the board. It's slowly eats the insides of these, these tubes away, and after after so long, I'd start to get a plug, or, you know, I'd go to change tips, and I'd go to tighten down the set screw, because even the irons, the desoldering irons that use these basically look the same. They have a set screw there. you go to tighten the set screw down, and it would just start to disappear into the iron, and you'd pull the tip out, and that's because the tip, the, the little set screw there had actually punched right through the side of it, because the walls of these things were, you know, as thin as paper. But that's the flux eating the insides of these out, because you'll usually have your tip temperature up a little bit higher on your desoldering iron than you will your soldering iron. But, uh, you know, the newer styles, they have a, they're designed a lot differently. There's a, they're a lot heavier, there's a lot more metal in them, and they have these nice little tubes, which actually go back in, the whole way back into the collection chamber. So, you know, pretty much plugs and clogs are a thing of the past. But like I say, it's the same thing. You want to take care of these tips. So I do the same thing. Now, I don't tin them as much like I do a soldering iron tip. But make sure you keep it clean. You know, every once in a while, give it a good scrub down in a brass wool sponge. I clean it off with the, the regular shocking or the dampened sponge. And then I'll tin it. Um, just to make sure that, you know, because you want to have good thermal conductivity when you're desoldering. Because the desoldering iron can't suck the solder out if the solder doesn't melt. And the solder is never going to melt if it never makes good thermal contact with the pad that you're trying to desolder. So yeah, it's not so important on this outside edge. It's just the actual right out there at the very end of the tip is the part that's really important on these. Because that's the part you're going to be when you come down on the circuit board or, you know, infant side, whatever angle you're doing it at. That's the part that's going to be making contact with the solder is the very tip of that thing. But like I say, same thing. Take care of your tips and they'll last you a long time. Um, I don't have enough fingers and toes on my body to count how many uh, destroyed soldering iron tips I have seen over the years. Um, people don't take care of their tips, and they don't keep solder on them like this. They might clean it before they put it back in the rack, and that's the problem. It sits there, and then oxygen can get to the, the bare metal of the tip, and it oxidizes. You know, they, they don't clean all the solder and flux off, and... I've seen tips that are just eaten away. I mean, like I say, I don't want to say tips last me forever, but God, I mean, I have a Haco station that I used to use a lot, and God, the tip in that thing, I honestly think it was two or three years old. That thing had probably done tens of thousands of, of you know, solder connections. You'd clean it off, look basically like the day it was new. Um, like I say, tip maintenance, very important. Um, because if your tip's not clean, if the if solder won't stick to this tip, then you can't make that's you know that's the key. The thermal, it's got to make a thermal contact. It has to bridge. So you need solder on the iron, or even you know look like the tip of the desoldering iron. It needs to be at least a really thin layer of solder there. So when you come down on the joint that you're actually soldering, 
you can get a thermal bridge between the solder that's on this tip and whatever you're soldering or desoldering. So the heat can flow out of this iron into that joint or into, you know, your new solder to melt it. So tip maintenance, very important. Um, probably, like I say, one of the most overlooked uh, maintenance things, you know, when it comes to your equipment. People take great care of a lot of things, but their soldering irons, even they might take great care of their soldering irons, but they don't give it, you know, they don't give it a second fault when it comes to the, the actual tips. And like I say, that's the working part of the iron. <laughs> If there's any most important part in your soldering iron or desoldering iron, it is the actual, just right out there at the end, that little tiny part that's really important. And you take care of it, they'll last you forever. I mean, these bags of soldering, I got them because I, I got them cheap, but you know, these bags of soldering iron tips I have here, there's honestly probably a lifetime supply for me. <laughs> I mean, these big, big wide chisel tips here, you know, I use those when I'm doing, uh, tube type radios, point to point, you know, wiring type soldering. And I, a tip will, one tip will last me for years. This tip right here, even a smaller one, and this one gets used all the time. You know, that one's continuously in use. That thing will last me for years before I have to replace it. Um, but like I say, that's because I take care of my tips. So there's just some tips on your tips. So I hope that gives a, somebody some help and uh, maybe we can uh, help reduce the number of neglected soldering iron tips in the world.